Okay, this is a setup for the cookie demonstration. There's my laptop and an external monitor there. Um, over here is the uh, Blade RF with uh, two antennas, one for transmit and receive. These are two um, uh, remote doorbells I'm using for the demonstration. This is a new Hampton Bay, newer Hampton Bay. And uh, it inside has a, it's a smart device. It has a button there for, for learning the frequencies of the transmitters. And then over here is an older Heath Zenith remote doorbell. And uh, inside it, it's got jumpers. There's a jumper diagram there. Jumpers that you use to program the code that it recognizes from the receivers. Okay. okay, the software and that I have running is uh, the one that I'm demonstrating cookies on the left, and then I have SDR Sharp running on the right just uh, because it's got the uh, waterfall display. Because at, at some point you won't know if the um, device is transmitting because um, during the demonstration we're going to deprogram the devices. But there's, um, you just press one, this is the there's a newer one. That's, oh, sorry, there's an older one, and then this is the new, new one. It's slightly different frequencies. Okay. And uh, over here for the is the uh, RTL SDR. Um, you can see that USB device right there. And it's connected to an antenna right there. And that's what the um, the SDR Sharp is, is connected to the RTL SDR, not to the Blade RF. Okay. Hello, this is a demonstration of uh, Cookie. Uh, the OK is for on off keying, and the C is for C sharp. Uh, this is a tool or a project that I'm working on um, uh, that helps you to um, analyze OOK radio transmissions and um, to define what, what kind of transmitter it is and, and to uh, use those characteristics to, to make new transmissions. You can also use it to create brand new uh, devices uh, using software-defined radio. I'm using the Blade RF and um, I have two uh, remote doorbells that I'm using for testing. Uh, I also have over here, um, I'm running um, SDR Sharp that's connected to an RTL SDR. That's just to, um, to monitor the transmissions because um, uh, at, at some point you, you won't be able to hear any uh, doorbells because of the um, they will be deprogrammed. So, uh, okay, the first step is to uh, receive a signal. And before you receive a signal, you have to select an SDR. Right now, the Blade RF is the only thing that I have uh, set up. Um, when you select the Blade RF, it, it uh, pulls it to get uh, certain information about it, such as the uh, serial number and so forth. These are the, um, the defaults that it it reads out of the registers within the, um, the Blade RF. So um, we're going to set this for 8 megs. Uh, pre, oh, sorry, 315 for the receiving. And uh, 8 megs for the sample rate. Uh, bandwidth is 2 megs, should be good enough. Alright, and um, we'll just leave the, the gain settings and the buffer sizes and so forth where they are. Um, let's see, we're going to use the newer Hampton Bay doorbell first. Let, let's um, come over here and let's just, just see what, what frequency that is exactly. I'll get some harmonics over there. Okay, so we we just go set the center frequency at um, 314 930 actually, just to be safe. Alright. 
Okay, and uh, we're going to record for five seconds. Oh, be oh before you can record, uh, the receive button is not lit up because we don't have a file selected. So let's select, let's give it a file name to record into. And um, I'm going to put this in the receive folder. I have some folders set up already. And we'll just call this um, presentation test one. Uh, Call this B because I already did an A. All right, the, the um, file format is uh, SC16Q11. That's a uh, signed complex number. Q11 is 11 bits. And um, uh, what that means is this is the, the default format for the R for the Blade RF, and it's a signed complex number that has a uh, stores IQ data, which is the the phase and um, uh, the magnitude of the uh, of the sample. I'm not going to go into details about the IQ sample format. You can um, research that another place. All right. So we're set up five seconds. Um, uh, these are not in place right now. Uh, at some point, I'd like to have it filtered right as you record it, just to save time, save a step. But right now, we're just going to receive. All right, so let me get the, um, the button in my hand. Press receive and press it up. Okay, and as you see over here, um, receiving started, file saved. All right. Now we will switch over to the uh, analyze and let's look at the file that we just recorded. Just B. Open that up, and um, this screen here allows you to um, to filter the raw signal so that you can get a, a nice rectangle wave out of it for um, for analyzing. Now let's just uh, and this uses MATLAB for the filtering and for visualization. If you don't set any of these um, filter parameters uh, and you just click on this button, it, uh, it'll MATLAB will just Display it as it is. Let's see how it looks. Does it look good? Okay, there it is. All right, so we've got um, like 10 million samples here, and you can see that I pressed the button twice. Let's, let's can zoom in here and take a closer look at this. All right. Um, when you, when you press the button, uh, it sends out words. It sends the same word over and over. So yeah, I press the button twice. That's why you see two groups of words. Let's, let's zoom in here even more. Oh, and uh, MATLAB, uh, in order to do um, its filtering, its uh, digital signal processing, it converts the signal into... Um, uh, an uh, IQ uh, with a, from zero to one, and uh, when you get the magnitude of that, you get you know, you know the uh, square root of two, which is 1.41. That's why the signals are at this level. All right, so let's kind of zoom in on one of these words here. Let's zoom in on this word. It's the second word in this group. So as you can see, there's a, um, a start bit, and then uh, some other bits, and then the next word starts right here at this at this start bit. Okay. And what we can do is we can uh, go back into Cookie, and we can just sort of slice out this this uh, this word here and the and the start bit of the next word. That's what we use to analyze. We need the one entire word and the first bit of the next word. Okay, so let's kind of, let's get some numbers and see, uh, let's see what sample, these are sample numbers down here, this is, uh, so we want to get, oh, this came up pretty nice, so I think, so we can get the sample number 1.9E7 to 2E7, so let's switch back over to cookie, slice that out, um, 1.9E7, and, Oops. 
and uh, 2e7, just filter it again, and then slice out just the point that we want. There it is. Oops, I accidentally zoomed in, zoom back out. Okay, so we got a lot of noise here, a lot of noise here, a lot of noise in here. So we need to filter that out in order to analyze it. So let's go back over to, over to Cookie and we'll just put in some filter parameters. Um, I just know from doing this a few times that the, um, uh, well, first of all, you get up in the sample rate. Uh, Cookie needs to know that we, we recorded this at 86, 8, 8 meg samples per second. Um, filter orders, how many taps there are on a filter. Since we're not doing this in real time, you can have uh, a lot of a lot of taps. It reduces the performance. If you're, if you're doing real time sampling, you might want to re reduce that. But I'm just going to put 128. That's a lot. And then um, I'm going to put 100K for the low pass and then 200K for the high pass. Uh, let's filter again so see how we look here. Wow, that took a long time. Something wrong with my PC. Okay, so there we go. So it looks a lot better. Uh, very much squared up a lot more. Uh, but we, we can even, uh, using Cookie, we can just sort of like chop chop this off. There's a bunch of noise here. Noise at the bottom. So we can just chop this off. We can just chop this off at, um, at the levels of 1 and... And 0.4 would be good, yeah. We'll just chop it off at, at 1 and 0.4 and cook here. So I'm going to put in uh, 1 is the highest we want and 0.4 is the lowest. Filter it again. All right, so now we have a really nice looking rectangle wave. And um, Kind of when you look at these bits here, it's kind of hard to see what the tops are. Let me see if I can. Uh, zoom out on that. Oh, I can maybe zoom in. Yeah, you can see the tops there. So you can see, so you can see that there, there's a start bit over here that's a, a narrow bit, and then there's a wide, narrow, wide, bunch of narrows. And then it's easier to see it when you look at the tops. And then there's one, two, three, four wide, two more narrows. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So now let's switch back over to Cookie and have Cookie analyze that. So just click Analyze Signal. And voila. There we go. It's got the um, sum right here. You can see there's uh, one start bit. And there's this delay here is, is the number of samples. So there's a there's a start bit that's a that's a zero, and then there's uh, 120,000 samples, and then and then the word starts. And in the inside the word, that kind of start bit, there's 24 bits. Um, it calculates the the narrow average narrow width and the average wide bit. If, if there was a, it puts them in the, in the bins. There's two there's Two bins for binary, oh, okay. If there were more than two bins, you would get an error message saying that's not binary, oh, okay. But there's the uh, um, the two bins. You can you can see which bits are in the uh, in the narrow bin. There's the, the bits in the narrow bin, and it gives you a standard deviation and um, how many narrow bits there are. Uh, you can also look at the wide bits. Uh, so there's seven wide bits. All right. And um, we're here for the, you can look at each individual data bit too. So we can just, uh, we'll just start with the first one and you can see uh, it's uh, the first bit, this is the second bit in the recording. It's got the width in samples, 
rise time. There is no rise period for the first. There is no rise period for the first bit because the the rise period would be um, from this rise to the next bit's rise. Okay, and then the um, uh, the fall period would be you know when the signal falls to the next one. So if you um, go back up here to the to the word summary, you can uh, uh, see the width uh, of the narrow bits in samples and the average wide width. You can get the um, the average period for each. Uh, it's very close, you can see. But the key thing here is the standard deviation of the rise and the falls because the way the, the, the bits align or the, the way the, the pulse aligns within the bit is that uh, either the, the front edge is synchronized or the falling edge. And so you're looking for the one with the, um, uh, with the smallest standard deviation. And you can see by quite a bit that the rising um, edge has a smaller um, standard deviation. So we can um, safely assume that these pulses are aligned on the, on the rising edge. And there's the word contents right there. Now, if you want to, if you want to save this um, this definition, we can make make an OK device. All right. so we can take that and just copies all that information over here as um, as milliseconds. Well, back in the analysis, if you wanted to, we can look at the time in milliseconds too. So there's a switch out here. So uh, a lot of times, it depends on what you're um, what you're trying to look for. You might want to look at it in, in hertz or, or in milliseconds. But um, generally, for this part of the process, we're going to use milliseconds. So we made an OK device. It's over here. Let's give it a name. We'll call it uh, Chris B to match this, match the signal there. Now, uh, so let's just, just save it as it is. No changes. Uh, I'm going to put it into... Um, I was making a folder. I thought I had a device folder. Okay, new folder there. Devices. Oops. Okay, so we'll just save the press B. It saves as, as a JSON file. Okay, so there it is. Now um, the, the device is saved. Now, now we can use this device to make a signal. The, the default is to, when we take it from the analysis page, is to generate the same signal. So, so, um, so let's make a signal. I'm gonna, yeah, I think five is good. So we're going to make a signal. Okay, it says um, it's being plotted on MATLAB. So. Over here and look, and there it is, five versions of the same signal. Um, you can see the levels are different here because this is not the uh, DSP version of it. This is the, um, the Blade RF version of it, which is uh, has a, a level, maximum level of uh, 2048. And then when you take the the, um, the magnitude, which is you know, the square root of uh, double 2048, you get a higher number. I forget exactly what it is. 25 something. Anyway, uh, so here it is, five signals here. Now, we can, let's go back over to Cookie. Uh, so we, we, we like that the way that is. We, we can save this, this signal, as a file. I guess we have to say yes. Okay. So this is going to be in the uh, release bin. I'm going to press B. There's B1, because we're going to modify this. There's B1, call, call it original. There's B, original. All right, save it. Okay, now, if you want to go ahead and test this out, let's go back over to uh, Transmit. I already have the right one selected here. Let's, um, let's open up a signal. Uh, let's just 
Yeah, so one that we just made. Hold on. All right. Now this signal was um, designed for um, sample rate of 8 meg, so we're going to make sure we change the transmit sample rate um, by 8 meg. Oh, and the, and the frequency. The, you know, the device uh, signal can be transmitted any frequency, any sample rate, so it gives a lot of flexibility there. So we're going to go back to the same frequency I had before. Was it uh, 314, 930? Yeah, let's just use that. Just to make exactly the same. Uh, sample rate was 8 meg. Uh, bandwidth was 2 meg. Uh, yeah, we want to give it more gain. The default uh, gains that come up on the Blade RF is very low so that you don't avoid interfering with stuff. But, um, let's, see, let's give it a um, 10 and 30. Uh, I'll leave the buffers and you know, transfers the same. And, uh, if you want to, we can view the signal um, before it's transmitted. Okay, and there it is. So it's, it's the same signal. So let's just put that back over there. Now, this is going to be helpful over here because when we um, when we transmit this signal, we should see it over here on, on the uh, on the RTL SDR. So let's transmit it, and hopefully we should see a signal here, and the doorbell should go because we're sending the same signal that we just or, or a uh, representation of the same signal that we just recorded. All right, so let's transmit it. Okay, that's great. All right, that's really good. Let's do it again. So now let's just um, mix it up a little bit. Let's go. Let's go back over to um, the um, the device here, and um, I'm going to use the same device. Let's just change the. Uh, let's just change one bit here. Let's just change this, this bit here to a zero. All right. And um, yeah, let's just uh, the signal. So you can see if you zoom in here, you can see before there was like a four bits in a row, four white bits in a row, but this one is now a, a narrow bit. All right. Now, uh, because we changed this, there were four bits in a row. We change that to a zero. So let's uh, let's um, save it. All right. Let's just call this. Um, I'm going to change it from original to uh, mod, mod 1. Alright. So let's save it. Okay, now let's go back over and let's transmit it. Let's open the, open the one we just made, mod 1. Open it. <clears throat> and transmit it. So we should... So because we changed the word, what we should see is the signal being transmitted. We should see it being picked up by the RTL SDR over here. But the doorbell should not go off because we changed we changed the code. It's, it's, it's a different one. So let's, um, let's transmit it and see what we get. Yeah, there's, there's a transmission, right? But it's not going off. Now, I showed you the learning button on the... Uh, on that doorbell. So I'm going to go to the learning button on that doorbell and I'm going to press it. And the way, the, the way that works is after you press the, if you have a more than one transmitter, um, after you press the learning button, you, you press the transmitter that you want within five seconds and then it'll, it'll remember that, that code. So, so and then uh, oh, an additional thing is if you this uh, doorbell has multiple tunes. Well, this one only has two. So, if you want the two transmitters to have two different tunes, you just keep transmitting within five seconds, and it'll um, uh, play different tunes. Okay, so I'm gonna press the button, the ring button now, and transmit. Okay. Okay.
Okay, so that one, yeah, let's save that too. That one's different. Okay, so we got to wait, uh, I think, 15 seconds for it to um, finish learning. So now, if we press the button, we'll press the button over here. Pressing the, the the actual physical doorbell button, it plays the two tone tune. And if we transmit our signal, it just does the one tone. Okay. So that is the basic uh, demonstration of cookie. Thank you very much.